Hey yo yo. Yo, check it. This my special attack, a hundred swords, a hundred episodes, and here's to a hundred more. Who got next? Place your change on the cabinet. Air Combo University graduates juggle my enemies before tagging in the master's hero. Pros in action, toe tagging champions getting active. The message will always get near you. Return to the dream team, Spider Man and Strider hear you. When the mask is on, I can't promise I clap to keep his glasses on. The handshake was potent. The inner glow shown as a mega optic blast trailing behind the Shinku Adoken. How you gonna dodge both of them? Blast you down to the last atom. Best regards from the pro time can. You couldn't fathom If you were raised on gaming and put a controller up I'm old enough to study the meta before I bless you We understood space in the dash clean Now we need to adjust and warm poster right next to the pro athletes Final justice like a primary lotus from out the sky Stars and stripes reminding you racism is still alive Bring a plasma sword to a gunfight Hey Ato, bring a hurricane kick Tatsumaki Sentaku One time for all my otakus who played the console till their eyes closing Probably forgot to study for their finals Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My word play my sword play when blades clash oh. Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My word play, my sword play when blades clash oh. Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My word play, my sword play when blades clash Recording Recording, it is this Swordcast and Swordcast. Yep. Bang. Swordcast. What's going? On? What's going on, everyone? And welcome. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? Episode <laughs> one fifteen. Episode Denver Carmelo t- plus a hundred. Yep. Um, episode Vince plus a hundred. Episode um real episode real age of Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> the remember, immortal yeah, Vince remember McMahon. Yeah, we had that that discussion where we, <laughs> we said that he he sleeps he sleeps for a thousand winners after WrestleMania, right. and he just has vessels. <laughs> he just funny. got avatars and shit. Get model seven one nine, the one with the muscles, <laughs> the one with the intact hamstrings. <laughs> did the Did you complete the repairs on the hamstrings? How are the quads on that one? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, bro, what are you into currently, man? It's bro, a lot, lot going on right now. Yeah, in dog. The nerd world. Yeah, I um, I had to take my basketball rim that has been <laughs> with us for like twenty seven. Bro, when you years. sent me that picture, I got kind of sad. Me, bro, I and it's it's gone. Like the whole pole is gone now. Oh man. And I like keep looking at it, and it makes you me sad. Kept something? Did you keep like the net? You I kept, kept the, the backboard. The backboard that's is fire. still there. Okay, yeah, that's fire. I'm not gonna put it back up because the whole reason why I had to replace it is because that backboard sucks. But yeah, no. But you should like you should do something crazy and get I like sh- an electric saw and cut off a piece. Bro, or I you should hang it up down it here. Out. Yeah, I might put it up here. Put it in here that somewhere. Would be cool. Did you have um, people sign it or something? Yeah, but I got a new one, um, and I paid a professional to install it. Uh. Right, because I don't fucking know how to do that shit. You Man, need- look, real quick, I want to shine some light on this right now. Yeah. Bro, you don't... Look, if I'm not a professional, do you know how much I would rather just pay somebody else to do something that I'm not a professional at? Exactly. Especially if it involves assembling something or fixing something. Yeah, just this involves cementing a pole into the ground. Just, what do I look like? Just, a, a, <laughs> fucking like... <laughs> a, a, a dock worker, bro. Like I don't. I went to Cranbrook. That's a private school. I don't know how to do that. I'm sorry. I can like solve this. a lot of complex problems, but cementing a pole into the ground is not one. And you know bro. what the solution is? Call a professional. a professional, bro. And you know what's even better than calling a professional? It, and it might this. You might not even. This might not be a realistic thing for you. But check and see if you have a friend or know somebody sure. that is a professional so right. you can support your friend and pay your friend to do it absolutely and guess what don't ask for a discount yeah man. pay them what they're worth pay your friends what they're worth dog the bad news though is it's gonna take like two weeks for them to fucking do it which is Yo, annoying like okay that kind of scares me two weeks as in like two weeks as in um it's gonna take them two weeks to like get the parts and stuff here. Oh, no, two no, no, weeks no. for the actual for the guys to come out. Okay, <laughs> no, it's like just, it's not like a two week building it in the background. <laughs> for like two. 
Hey, it's clocking in for the day. Almost done. <laughs> like, nah. They would be paying these these dudes salary for no what <laughs> hell no 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 i uh it'll it'll just take that long to like schedule the appointment it'll probably i imagine oh, it'll be word. done in like three four hours kind of scared uh, me a little bit when you said that yeah nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> that's what i've been into man i'm just uh this house has to have a basketball rim dog and it makes me sad that there isn't one it's like foreign to me i can't i have trouble processing it like i look at it and i'm just like i can't I don't this? understand what I'm looking at. It's like what is this place? looking into Pandora's box and you like go crazy if you look at it too long. <laughs> <clears throat> so, anyways, that's what, what about you? Oh man, uh you already know Vagabond. I've been I'm embarrassed at how much I've read <laughs> this uh Oh my goodness, I have to tell this story. What happened to you yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> I text so I sent Hero this text yesterday. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie, bro. This is the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me, but nobody saw it. So yesterday <laughs> yesterday evening, I'm sitting in my backyard. It's so It was so nice out. It was very nice out. I was outside sitting in a chair. I was reading um, a Vagabond book. One of the, the giant, you know, they have the big ones that have like three volumes of the manga in one. So those are the ones I've been uh, getting to read it. I'm sitting here reading of one of the Vagabond manga and I dozed off fell asleep haven't slept in a long time been up forever for a couple of days start dozing off falling asleep and I wake up bro and it's like pouring rain outside so I wake <laughs> up and I'm getting rained on and it and so first thing I do I like close the book I go to get up Bro, I'm sitting in this plastic lawn chair. The chair snaps. It just breaks. <laughs> I fall, obviously falls right on my butt, hit my back, my head on the ground. <laughs> Book falls. You know what I'm saying? Just It's like, you know, when you're like working out and your headphones get like slapped off or something. Yeah. It was so. It was just mad. Or when you stand up and like pull the cord out of what out of oh something. Oh my god! So annoying. It was. And then, bro. And then I go to get up and the, and then I like couldn't get out of the chair. It was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was broke. Oh my goodness! That was the most. It was just a really bad like forty five seconds of you know it minor inconvenience. It reminds me of when I first moved back into this house and I was did I tell you about this when I was doing some like lawn I was like doing something outside and I lost my balance and I like No. Bro, so I I was like leaning over the top of like a bag of like leaves or something and I was trying to reach for something and I realized that I was losing my balance and I was like and it all happened like in slow motion from my perspective. And the reason why I was wild is because I had I, there was a moment where it became clear, like, wait a minute, I'm a grown ass man and I'm about to fall down. Like, I'm not about to just slip. Like, I'm about to fall down on the ground. And so oh my God. I had enough time to, like, assess to see, like, if anybody was out, if anybody was looking. And I was like, all right, well, here we go. And I just went down. <laughs> just fell over accepted you you accepted the loss man. yeah it was the only way i could stop myself was like you know how you like it, do like an extreme body contortion and like almost pull a muscle out of socket to keep yourself yeah, from but falling it's like you're you're almost uh willingly taking on a worse injury than right just so you don't fall yeah so i was just so, like the best case well scenario fall. here is just to go ahead and just ride this wave and yep just have a seat for a couple of seconds. Just have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> just fell down. Yep. Shit. Like just, a, eat, just go ahead and eat that fall, man. Right. It's better. <laughs> Bro, the funniest expression <laughs> for falling down. Just go ahead and eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I totally ate shit on my skateboard. Oh, man. That's one of the better uh, like white uh, person sayings. Yeah. Is, yeah. Hilarious to eat shit. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, Absolutely hilarious, man. Um, but yeah, man. Aside from the <laughs> from the funny story, um, like I said, just I've just been super in the um, vagabond, man. Or is it vagabond or vagabond? I thought it was pronounced vagabond, and but everybody else says vagabond. So I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, all words are made up. Yep, they sure are. Um, <clears throat> But anyway, man, it's 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 so good, man. It's fire. Um, I love it. It's it's just 
like I said, it is the it's definitely the best manga I've ever read. But at the same time, it's like it's such a good story, and it's not even necessarily action all the time, but it's like tension. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Like, there's like just like this constant tension going on, and it's like the way that they that it's illustrated and the way that this the story is told. It's just like you've just it's something that you feel throughout the entire story. And it's um it's just like little some of the best things aren't even the fights, man. Like one of my favorite one of my favorite parts is so uh he so uh Miyamoto Musashi goes to this this uh village and he's trying to there's a sword master there that's like one of the you know, one of the most like renowned best sword masters and he wants to try to he wants to he wants to fight him, you know, because that's what he's that's his whole his whole thing is he's you know he's um, on the warrior path, so he's just trying to he just travels, you know, and he just basically finds out who's the who's the top dog, you know what I mean? And he just and he's basically he's just testing his his skill and his strength, and he just wants to fight him. Mm. Um, so he gets here and he is staying at this hotel, and this lady brings him this flower uh, well what happens is a girl it's a it's so much so but i'm just gonna give the short version <laughs> a girl gives uh, uh his like caretaker at this hotel a flower and she brings it she has it when she goes to his room to bring him tea uh and she's like scared of him because he's so he's just you know he's just such a he's just a he's just a monster <laughs> you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so she's like scared of him when she goes in his room like he doesn't he's he's so um alert all the time like he sleeps with his back against the wall you know what i mean yep. and, and things like that and she's kind of scared of him she spills the tea um and he sees the flower and he takes it and he's like admiring the flower and she's like oh do you like flowers and he's like yeah and she's like i'll bring you a vase you know so then she brings him a vase and she brings him a vase for the flower and he's like it's too long for the vase and the lady's holding the flower and this dude just and he just pulls his sword out and just cuts it while she's holding it. Nice. Terrorizes her. She runs off. He grabs the flower and he's looking at it. And he's like, my cut's not the same as the way that it was cut before. And he's like, who cut this? You know what I mean? Because uh, it was cut so perfectly. Clean, yeah. So now he's like out in the field and he's cutting these flowers. And he's like, and he's just so into the cut. And he's like. Every time I cut it, the flower, like, it, it's like it dies. It, but this cut, the flower is still, like, thriving and it's still alive. Like, so to get into the when this is such a famous, like, swords, you know, swordsman village that whenever uh, uh, wandering Ronin come there and they try to visit the master, they write a letter. You know what I'm saying? They try to write a letter mm-hmm. to visit. And his, his <laughs> like, subordinates, they... They just kind of take the letter and they they just are like, no, you can't get in. Like everybody tries to do this. So he writes a letter and his letter is like, they're like, yo, like some dude is here and he like wrote this letter and it's just way different than all the other ones. So all the, his, so all the masters, like students read it and it was about the cut, you know what I'm saying? Because he wants to know who cut it. And he ends up finding out basically that the master is the one who cut the flower. You know what I'm Mm. saying? So then he goes to the dojo and he's like having drinks with these guys and he's trying to fight them because he's trying to beat them all so he can go see the master. You know right. what I'm saying? But they're not, they're like really trying not to fight because they don't want to let him, you know, get what he wants. So he's just in there like, you know, he's he's just in there trying to provoke them to fight him. And he's, and he's just like, hmm. he's like, so the master cut it. And they're like, they're like, yeah, they're like, why? He's like, hm, I was right. And then he was like, they were like, what do you mean? He's like, because he he was basically like, if one of you would have cut it, that would have meant that I w- that you were stronger than me. But I know the only one possibly stronger than me here is the master. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, was, it was just like, but that's how the the manga is like little little things like that, and they spend so much time on like those little details, mm. pretty much to show just how obsessed this this guy was with you know what I'm saying with swordsmanship. Yeah. Um. But yeah, greatest manga of all time, fire. Uh, all right, man. One of my favorite things that you do in this Discord <laughs> is you just you just go on a hot take rampage. All right, bro. So who got an opinion? I got a fucking hot take. <laughs> so uh, let's get into heroes hot takes. <laughs> 
Banana, banana. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute. All right, man. I'm just going to, I just got some topics here. And you're just going to give me some hot takes on these topics. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go. NBA 75. Uh, NBA 75, bro. Y'all are tripping. <laughs> First of all, it's if it ain't Isaiah Thomas at the top of the list, bro. then I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm going to give a hot take from your perspective. Tony Parker should be on there. Thank you. Most underrated player ever. This dude was a finals MVP. He's got all those championships with the Spurs. He was the starting point guard with Tim Duncan, and he wasn't a slouch. Like he was out <coughs> here who? dominating. And flat out, one play. of the greatest backcourts of all time. Um, so yeah, put some respect on Tony Parker. Uh, give me a hot take on Marvel villains. Hey dog, if your name is uh, Magneto, <laughs> I'm sorry. I got to put the proper respect. <laughs> the honorable. Rabbi Dr. Eric Lyncher X, <laughs> the prophet, greatest Marvel villain of all time. Villain, my apologies. <laughs> I meant hero. <laughs> also, uh, God Doom uh, in Secret Wars or Bust. Oh, let's go. Um, give me a hot take on Jason Tatum. Hey, dog. Jason Tatum might be here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> might have might be better at this moment than Kevin Durant, Ooh. which is saying a lot. Now hold on a minute. Now a lot of people talking about Kevin Durant is overrated. Not so fast. Kevin Durant, one of the top ten greatest players of all yeah, time. Yeah, I think it's so weird that people, <laughs> there's people on the internet love to, they just love for people to fail. And yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? They can't wait. Bro, he's 33 off of a off of a ACL or sorry off of an Achilles, Achilles the, rupture. The absolute worst sports injury that you could Ever. possibly get. Yeah, no, he he'll be. I mean, is he the same player as he was? Kinda. I mean, not not that far off. It's just Jalen or sorry, uh, Jason Tatum is also amazing. That's facts. Um, give me a hot take on tag team wrestling. <laughs> Dog, old school tag team wrestling. <laughs> Trash, bro. <laughs> now, I will say uh, one one half of the revival is better than I gave him credit for, but them big, I'm going to put you in a headlock until the fucking commercial break comes back, ass <laughs> niggas. Not going to be able to do it. No. Not going to be able to do it. Hey, right. if you're not doing high spots off the top rope and jumping from the goddamn uh, from the rafters and doing Canadian destroyers from the crowd, <laughs> then that's not for me. Oh my gosh! And last, give me a hot take on billionaires giving advice <laughs> to regular civilians. Dog, I say this every single time I see someone talking about it. Billionaires do not have good advice for normal people. Stop thinking that billionaires have anything interesting to say that is that is close to or that is reasonable for any normal regular person. Billionaires, trash, bam, bust. <laughs> and those are the hero beat hot takes. Shout out to Stu Gotts and the Dan Levitar show. Love it. Boom. All right, man. Those are good. Those are fantastic. All right, man. Quick wrestling recap. There's only one thing that matters right now. New Japan and AW are doing a super show in June. It's going to be in Chicago. Um, I'm super excited about it. What is, if you had to pick the one match, you can only pick one. What's the, okay, we'll go to pick one match that you really want to see, but then the match that you feel like should be the top match on the card. Oh, um, so a match that I really want to see, I, we've been talking about this <clears throat> a lot, would definitely be Orange Cassidy and uh, and Naito. I don't think they're going to do it just because, one, because Orange Cassidy's hurt. Mm -hmm. um, but I would love to see that just because the gimmicks are perfect. The one I do think there is another really good match for Naito, and I think it's Andrade or Oh, yeah. Um, Andrade they, they've is, got history. They've got some history with LIJ, Los Angeles, they Apollo, and all that stuff. So that match would also be fire. Yes, the match that I think is going to be at the top of the car door, near the top. Uh, well, I I'm, hope Kenny comes back. Yeah, Kenny for sure. Is, there's no he's, doubt. He has. There's no he's doubt he's coming back. back. It'll probably be Kenny and Hiroshi or he, Kenny and Tanahashi or Kenny and Okada. But I, we've seen that 
we've seen both we of have, those plenty of have, times, right? And I have said that I, uh, I want to see Kenny Okada, but I don't though because yeah. I don't want them to ever revisit that because it was so good. Yeah, you don't want to tarnish it, it. They ended it perfectly. I don't want them to go back to that. Yeah. I I think that the Kenny match that I want to see is Kenny versus Osprey. Osprey, yeah, I think that'll be probably the one. Um, I also would love to see Tanahashi and CM Punk. I don't particularly like CM Punk, even though he's been pretty good lately. Yeah, he's been, he's been all right. But just from like the quote unquote dream match perspective, mm-hmm. that'll be or or like but Daniel Bryan and, and or sorry Brian Danielson and um and Tanahashi. That would be fun. Or actually, I'd actually rather see Brian Danielson and Okada. Like I think that would be m- more interesting because um, they got pretty. Their styles are pretty different. Like yeah. Okada's, he's like a he's a technician as well, but he's also like a way he's like an athlete. Yeah, too. he's like an athletic wrestler. For you know sure. what I mean? That's a perfect way to describe him. He's just kind of a just kind of a supreme athlete. Yeah, he's he's just one of those guys that's just one of them all around talents. Yeah. Um, no, that's 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 true, man. Um, I definitely want to see. Like I said, I want to see um, Omega Osprey for sure, one hundred percent. I think that's the that's the big time, that's the big match to me. I mean, it's the one that we haven't seen. They wrestled once, I think, in um, PWG like years and years ago. Um, but I think that's the big, that's the big one. That would be the the like one of the best matches ever if mm-hmm. those two wrestle. Um, but like you said, I'd love to see Tanahashi CM Punk. I'd love to see Okada CM Punk. Um, I'd love to see um, Naito Andrade. Uh, I'd love to see um, the. I would, bro. I want to see Samoa Joe and Jeff Cobb. Oh yeah, uh, beef slapper. <laughs> uh, I want to see. I want to see that. There's so many. Uh, there's so many match combinations. Uh, I would love to see Danielson and Zack Saber Jr. Um, uh, like you said, Danielson Tanahashi, Danielson Okada. Like, but you know what else? would really uh, make me happy though is I would really love to see some titles on the line. You know sure, what I mean? Like, yeah. and like, and like some title changes too. So you could keep the yeah, inter- keep promotional going. stuff going for a little bit. Um, I really want to see that. I don't want to just be like a bunch of eight man tag matches and mm-hmm. like, nah, bro, like go all the way in. You know what I'm saying? Go all the way in. I yeah. think it, I think it'd be awesome. So um, I'm excited for that. Literally, Excitement at a ten. Oh, you know, you know what I think might happen, and this is gonna be annoying if it does. I think they're probably gonna turn Kenny face, and they might have him, and they're gonna like reintroduce the Bullet Club in America with with the Elite or whatever they're calling themselves now. The 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 uh, new era See, Elite. What are they calling I think, themselves? Well, hold on. Let me just say this okay. first. I think that um, whatever the group that with um, Adam Cole and Reed Dragon and and the leader calling themselves, I think they're gonna relaunch the Bullet Club. And I think that in order to turn Kenny face, they're gonna have him go against Jay White, which would be disappointing. Yeah, um, it would be cool storytelling, but like I don't particularly care for Jay White, so I don't either. Um, and Jay White is a first of all, Jay White's a really good wrestler, but uh, my thing with him has uh, I just. His matches in New Japan just became unwatchable for me because he just cheats so much, yeah. and it's always like tons and tons and tons of just nonsense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. Uh, but you know, we'll see, man. Um, we'll see how to how that goes. Um, but yeah, bro. Other than that, I think that we'll definitely see some type of. Elites versus uh, quote unquote undisputed elite with Adam. That's Bro, the one. Yeah. Has Adam has? <laughs> I, I've been saying this for so long, but I just think that Adam Cole is just diminishing so badly now yeah. that he is around all these all this good talent. Like I've been telling y'all, bro. No, he's Adam right. Cole is not. He is not the guy. Like he's just super. Man, he's all right as hell. Yeah, he's just you know he's all right. His look is super basic, regular. Bruh, like goodness. his move sets are is basic, all right. regular. Right, he's he's not even that interesting. Oh, like baby. the Adam Cole can you Bay Bay if thing he is. Did it, can you imagine if he didn't have that? Uh, no, because he would, wouldn't be a pro wrestler. <laughs> he would just be some guy. It's literally just some guy. <laughs> oh man. 
Um, Britt Baker is legitimate. I know you hate her too, but she's legitimately more interesting than him. Yeah, I mean, I agree, man. Adam Cole is just kind of, kind of little white dude with uh, long hair and draws. Yep, dog. Put on some fucking pants. Tr- some pants some might help. Pants, bro. Like you always say, pants might help. Bro. I don't. I don't know that anybody. Like, look, dog. <laughs> I feel like uh, Brock Anderson is the wackest looking wrestler I've oh ever my goodness, seen, bro. bro. Ever? Why? The only reason he's got a contract is because of his dad is Arn Anderson. Of course, but Let's like, get that out the way. He don't look like he's that great a wrestler. First of all, and his oh and also God. on top, if you if you know you can't wrestle that well, you can't just be out here in some draws and some <laughs> and some nineteen seventy five knee pads, bro. Like he looks so whack, dog. Bro, he looks like um, create a wrestler, but never actually got started yeah like he looks like the default like like default selection number one. Oh my like just the goodness. fucking worst so bad like you can't i don't know that anybody unless you're a, unless you're a brian danielson level technician you gotta wear pants i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> put some pants on uh all right man oh man that's that's i just you know what i don't think i think he might be the most boring looking wrestler yeah, kind of ever. Well, I, I, I think Brock Anderson got that. No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about him. Oh yeah, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> and and I think Adam Cole is like on the list. Brock Anderson looks like he woke up and went to get some drink some milk straight <laughs> out the carton at four thirty in the morning. Right, and somebody was like, "Hey, you know you're a wrestler, right?" And he, just, <laughs> he just walks right to the ring in that outfit. Oh jeez. All right, man. Uh, here we go, real quick. Gonna quickly cover this spoiler. Alert! Ah, uh, yes. Um, for all the Moon Knight guys, all, the, all our people that are uh, following us with Moon Knight. Uh, so we're what four episodes in now? Yep. What did you think of episode four? I just want to say this: What is going on, dog? <laughs> yeah. Uh, What's happening? I don't know. <laughs> we just gotta wait, bro. I'm sure it'll all make sense in the end. Um, this episode was all right. I didn't love it necessarily. Um, I thought that it was cool to see some Tomb Raider type stuff with uh, with the the woman lead whose name I can't remember. Um, and she was flat out like squared up with a mummy, like that was pretty interesting. Yeah, that was kind of intense. <laughs> just straight up was like, all right, I'm, we I'm just about, about to scrap. scrap. <laughs> just about to fight, bro. Like, uh, yeah, that was that was that was uh, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, um, and you know they they keep teasing the mystery box of this third uh, persona, which I think will make everything make sense. So I checked in with my brother, who's the Moon Knight uh, master, the mm-hmm. Moon Knight number one fan. He says, so um, I got some good information from him. He says that this third personality is probably Jake Lockley. I think that's how you say it. Is that um, the one that's rich? No, because actually they kind of switched it up. So maybe he will be in the show. Mm-hmm. I guess in the comic book, the rich kind of Bruce Wayne type of personality is actually Stephen Grant, but they made Stephen Grant the oh. archaeologist in the show. Mm-hmm. So they probably they probably will switch it up and maybe this will be that one, you know, the kind of the rich personality. But I gotta say, man, I cannot stand um I can't stand um Ethan Hawke's this villain character, man. Yeah. A he lot is, of the reviews have said that he's just looked bored. He does and he's just <laughs> boring and he just gets on my nerves, man. Yeah. Go away. Got to be careful with villains now. The bar for villains is real. It's high. really high. So you can't just be generic, like hey, just man. you know. Hey, I would like to. <laughs> nah, you got to. And really it's like people it. always be like just letting them talk, and it's like, bro, he's so sketchy off from the jump. <laughs> so hey, why are you even? Listening why are to you this even guy? listening to the <laughs> words that he's saying? Hey, I don't understand here. that. Yeah, he looks. He already looks mad sketchy. So. Why are you even giving him the time to have a conversation with you? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't get it, man. I don't. I don't understand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, this was definitely one of my least favorite episodes so far. Yeah. Um, it wasn't – I'm not going to say it was bad. I think my favorite by far is still episode three. Yeah. Um, you know, man, I'm, I'm – I'm I'm still I'm still being patient with it. Uh we got two episodes left. Marvel usually does a really good job of um paying us off, you know, for the for getting through the story in those last couple of episodes. So I'm hoping that it really picks up. Uh but, you know, we'll see. And 
I'm getting a little I'm getting a little antsy, man. I want to see some hands. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Well. And this is a character, I mean, in all fairness, this is kind of a character who's known for his um, you know, scra- scrapping ability. Um, so we'll see, man. We'll see. I don't know. I don't think that they're going to I I mean, I, if they wanted to establish that I mean, I think I think that this is something that that you in particular are are either going to just continue to be annoyed with or you're just going to have to, like, change your expectations. I don't I think that they're only going to give us the the specialty hands for the specialty hands, niggas. Yeah. Like like Shang-Chi and and like if they ever revisit Iron Fist, which they should. Uh, but like yeah, they I, should, not, man. Uh, I've been reading the Iron Fist comic book. You know, they changed Iron Fist now. It's um. It's um Swordmaster. Swordmaster's a newer oh. uh Marvel character, but Swordmaster's Iron Fist now it's actually really good. Uh Danny Rand's still in it. And for the record, okay, should Iron Fist have been aging from the start? Absolutely. For sure. But Danny Rand is actually a very sweet character. He's a good character in the comic books. He is not uh, by any means like a bad character. Yeah. And if they would have just done it properly in the show, the problem wasn't that the guy was white. The problem was that he was horrible. Yeah, he was bad. You know what I'm saying? So he was bad. Absolutely. It's frustrating though for both of us as martial arts fans. I don't. I don't think that Marvel cares enough about that. Like I think they're never going to give us a, a martial arts Spider Man. They're not going to give us a martial arts. I mean, they they gave us some of it with Cap because he that's all he does is is fight. Mm-hmm. They gave us some of it with with because with these like ground level characters like uh, Black Panther and Spider Man or sorry Black Panther and uh, and and Cap. And Bucky, but for the other people who have other powers in like for Wolverine, I don't I would be pleasantly surprised, but surprised if they like went extensively into his martial arts background, which is mm-hmm. probably going to be frustrating. Um, Or like, I mean, they, Deadpool, you got to with Deadpool because it's part of his character. But I just I think that they are more interested in the spectacle than they are the the hand. I know, but that frustrates me, man. Come on. Yeah. See some fights. Want to see some good core. Especially, fights, you're, you're just not going to see it feet. with Spider Man, bro. You're just not going to. But I just don't understand that because if you read a Spider Man comic book, what's he doing, hero? What's he doing in those comic books? He's scrapping. He's Thank doing, you. He's fighting. He he's learned from Shang Chi. He learned from Shang Chi. My man, he went to Wakanda. He learned from T'Challa. He got his hair braided. Yeah. Wakanda. <laughs> K. Come on, man. I want to see some Spider Man hands and feet, bro. He's he's a great fighter. Um. But yeah, uh, I guess we'll see, man. Um, but all right, that's frustrating, though. It is. It is frustrating. It frustrates me for sure. Um, but all right, man. Uh, moving on. Let's go. Last week, I fired some anime questions at you, and you had to answer them without thinking too much. I texted mm-hmm, you those mm-hmm. same questions. Yeah. Uh, now it's my turn to play the rapid fire anime question game. All let right. Let me stretch. Let me stretch real quick. <laughs> I'll get a little, uh, little stretch in. Yeah. All right. Let's go. I'm ready. All right. Boom. Greatest anime of all time. Uh, Samurai Shampoo. Uh, favorite anime series of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Samurai Shampoo. <laughs> Isn't that what happened to you? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, favorite current anime. Ooh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, favorite anime character. Uh, Kakashi. Favorite anime group or team. Uh, Team Yuri Messi from Yu Yu Hakusho. Boom. Great answer. Uh, favorite anime studio? Oh, what? I think MAPPA, the studio yeah, that Ma- makes yeah, Jujutsu yeah. Kaisen. The reason I say MAPPA real quick. They do everything. Well, they do Jujutsu Kaisen and they do God of High School, and I love their fights. I love the way that they do their, their fights. Yeah. Um, Favorite anime studio? Oh, well, I just did that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite Big Three era? I hate this. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat. Akira, Ninja mm-hmm. Scroll, Ghost in the Shell. Yep, that was the only three I was about to say. I was I, I was like saying them with you. Like it has to be those three. Um, most or uh, sorry, favorite anime genre. Oh, I mean, I mean, we we talk. I mean, say what you want, but probably Shonen, right? Yeah, I mean that's the thing that most people like, and yeah. it's the most popular for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, most underrated anime. Oh, uh, most underrated. I'm gonna say Dororo. I strong. think Dororo is a really good show. Yep. Uh, or Gurren Lagann. One of those two. Super strong dog. Yeah. 
Uh, favorite anime opening theme? Uh, Smile Bomb, Yu Yu Hakusho. Good one. Um, favorite anime clothing, closing theme? Oh, Shika no Uda, Samurai Shampoo. Greatest Thanks. ending song ever. Uh, favorite anime movie? Uh, Ninja Scroll. Strong. Boom. That's it? Yep. Speed round. Ah, Passed. Ah, let's go. I didn't struggle with that at all. Nah. I yeah, mean, top was, of your head. That was good. Um, all right, man. Real quick. Sports team check in. <laughs> What's I mean, going on? You know what? With sports team. You know what, bro? Uh, so K didn't win rookie of the year. You know what? He did it. And okay, before you before you go, because I know you're gonna feel more passionate about this than me, even though I am. Uh, Pistons are definitely my second favorite team. Mm -hmm. I have to say this, bro. I'm very disappointed in this because he should have got rookie of the year. And you always talk about how just the media, just Detroit is just not a, a cool enough, uh, it's not a cool enough sports place for them. So they they always hate on Detroit and everything. I just think this is kind of crazy, bro. Like, here we are, here we are um, holding team success as, here we are holding team success as a more important uh, reflection of the rookie season when these guys are second and third and fourth options on their teams. Yep. You got Cade, team success, no, but but here you have a guy who's averaging better numbers than the guys than the other guys on a worse team. He's playing the game as a number one option. He's being defended as a number one option. And he's still putting up better numbers than these guys. These guys were on winning teams, but they're third, fourth options on their teams and their numbers aren't even better than his. I just yep. If Le okay, everybody knows what happened LeBron's rookie year. It's no secret, right? Everybody knows what happened LeBron's rookie year. Melo had better numbers, and his team went to the playoffs. LeBron still won rookie of the year. You yep. know what I'm saying? So what's what's really what really matters? Like you know what I mean? I mean, K was it just the, bothered me, bro. LeBron won because he was the biggest star, and he was the one people were talking about the most. And guess what? Kade is too. That's like, that's what I. That's why I said that. Because Kade is the bigger star. I out felt of all like of those Kade guys. was the bigger star. He's the one that's the most talked about. Yep. I really was confused by this. And then the craziest thing was he wasn't even like second. He was, he was like third. He was third by a mile. Unbelievable. He wasn't even in the. Con it wasn't even close. He didn't. Stand, he didn't have a chance. That's so dumb. So I have. I feel a few different ways about it. Like I mean. K was the best rookie ever, and here and when they start doing flex, they start stretching, doing mental gymnastics. Well, K was the best rookie, but he didn't have the best season. Like, okay, whatever, bro. Like, oh my goodness, uh, you want to talk about team success, which never mattered until now, ever, um, never mattered. Until and sure, now. you want to talk about team success. All right, cool. When the Pistons didn't have K, they were like three in a million. Um, when they did have him, that's when they won all the rest of their games, which is only like twenty. But still, he said three in a million. <laughs> I mean, they literally only won three. The games that he didn't no, that's, play, that's fact. They only won three times. Fact. Um, furthermore, if you look at when, um, because so after the All Star break, the Pistons actually had a better record than the Cavs, who also didn't make the playoffs, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um. And what's interesting is that they slumped. They went like nine, nine and fifteen. And you know who was out during that time? Not Evan Mobley. It was Jared Allen who was out. Oh, that's weird. Jared Allen was out, and all of a sudden they got trash. Mm. So you can clearly deduce that the bigger reason why they were good this year was because of Jared Allen, not because of Evan Mobley. They struggled mightily when it was just Evan Mobley. You know why? He's going to be really good, but he's a, his defense is kind of overrated right now. Mm. Um, and I also think that like he just... He's never going to be the number one guy on any successful team because he just doesn't have it like that. He doesn't have that kind of game. Now, I will say, and let's just get this out in front of folks because you, you already know how we felt about the the Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green situation. Let's just mm -hmm. let's just swallow this pill right now. Jalen Green is going to be a fucking star, bro. Right. Jalen Green is going to – he's uh, and so I don't want nobody trying to rub it in our faces next season when he averages 25. Jalen, Jalen Green is going to be a fucking – but he's gonna be a ball player, no question about it. He's gonna he's gonna have a similar season to what Anthony Edwards did this year. Uh -huh. um, does that mean that I look that I think that we made the wrong pick? No, absolutely not. Because I think Cade is a much better all around player and has the stuff to lead a team to contention and to winning that Jalen Green doesn't have. Is Jalen Green gonna be a better pure scorer? Probably. But like, who would I rather have on my team to lead us to to 
victories into championships, K 10 times out of 10. Mm-hmm. And finally, when it comes to whether or not he won, it's, I'm not surprised that he didn't win. Like, we kind of all saw this coming. It's, an, it's frustrating, but I'm not surprised. But I'm also okay with it. Here's why. Can you imagine the chip that's going to be on this fool's shoulder yeah, and when he goes into the offseason? He's about sure, to come bro. back next year and be a motherfucker, dog. And I don't know if you said – somebody said that on Twitter um, in response to me kind of being upset and <laughs> talking to somebody about yeah. him not winning rookie of the year. Um, but, yeah, man, for sure, bro, 100%. I, I will take – the the one positive thing that comes from this is definitely the chip that's going to be on his shoulder. And I – We'll take that 100%, man. I'll definitely take that. So, yeah, um, yeah man, I'm I'm excited to see him next year. I think he's going to be super hungry. Mm-hmm. Um, so, let's go, man. I expect him to – I expect his numbers to look like LaMelo Ball's this year, but maybe – but probably better. I think he's going to be better than mm-hmm. LaMelo Ball as – I mean, he, I don't know. LaMelo Ball might take another step next year because I, I think LaMelo's going to be great. I love LaMelo, but I kind of – and I, at first I wasn't sure. When I when, when we first drafted Cade, I wasn't sure. Like, man, gun to your head right now, would you trade Cade for LaMelo? I might have said yes at the beginning of the season, mm-hmm. but but not anymore. Okay. Now that I've seen them both play a lot, I kind of think – I think Cade got legitimate Luka upside, bro. Like, I think nah, he's got – I think I, he's going to be have, better than LaMelo, and I think he could be as good as, as Luka. I have no doubts, bro. I have no doubts. That he has, um, he's flat out locking Luca up, bro, bro. busting his ass. Come on, hundred <laughs> percent. He busting his no, ass. <laughs> I have no doubts, man. That that he's got that type of upside, and I am excited to see uh, how this goes, man. Like I'm really, I'm really high on on this guy, and I'm I'm excited to see um, what happens with his career. Agreed. Boom. All right, man. Uh, the Warriors, bro. Uh, we lost last night. Everybody, everybody loves to hit me up when they lose, uh, but when they win, <laughs> nobody ever says anything. Right? right. Yeah, I like um, corny. Yeah, I'm corny for that. Uh, but yeah, bro, they lost. But man, let's be real, bro. Steph coming off the bench. Um, yeah. Jordan Poole, max contract superstar, effective immediately. Bro, I saw somebody on the internet saying, uh, "Oh, he's just a, he's just a, a uh, what do they say? He's just a system guy." I'm like, bro, have you have you watched a any system of his game? guy, bro? He literally just goes one. Right, he gets all of his <laughs> points in in isolation. In isolation. All of them. <laughs> he's just, he's a bucket, bro. Like, you know what, what that, are we hey, doing here? Come on, bro. You already know stat stat check box score checkers. That's ridiculous. It. That's all these. That's all these guys do. Like the guy who tried to tell me that fucking Duncan Robinson was interchangeable with Tyler Hero. Goodness are you out of your mind? Are you out of? So your you mind? don't watch basketball? Okay, cool. Gotcha. So you only check the box scores on NBA.com, which is crazy yeah. because Tyler Hero averaged twenty this year. Twenty. Twen- two zero. All right, get out of here. Um, Jordan yeah. Poole averaged twenty this year. Bro, Jordan Poole was a honorable mention, like G League, uh, all G League. Teamer last year, right? This guy is a max contract superstar, yeah, and he probably won't even win Most Improved Player. You know what I'm saying? No. The NBA is just y'all got it. Uh, whatever. It's gonna be Ja, know. but if Jordan Poole is up, he's <laughs> it shouldn't in that be Ja, bro. He's already he been sweet. Yeah, but he's like he's like the best player in the league now. It don't matter. He went man. from being like, hey, yeah, that guy's bro. pretty good, to like, oh shit, yeah. He's but the best Jordan guy. Poole went from not even being in the NBA pretty much to being like, oh. Um, bro, okay, same thing with Jeremy Grant last year, and he didn't get it. They're not about to get it, give it to you if you're not on one of their darling teams. Mm-hmm. And somehow Golden State is not one of the darling teams anymore. It's because of Draymond. Hey, Draymond's um, a <laughs> – Man, I love talking. him so much, bro. That's my favorite role player ever in NBA history. Yeah. Yeah, I love Draymond so much. Um, but, yeah, bro, Warriors up 3-1. But you know, it's a gentleman sweep. We like to we like to go up. We like to let them get a game at third place, then we like to finish it off at the at the house. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's gonna happen. Steph's coming off the bench, by the way, which right. is which is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, Steph Curry, Stephen Wardell, greatest shooter of all time, yeah. NBA three time NBA champion, two uh, multi, time two time league MVP, unanimous MVP, all time. The most unbreakable record all time, the three point record that will never be scratched, coming off the bench. Yeah, crazy. Um, but yeah, man, Warriors. The NFL draft is coming up, man. 
what are we going to do, Vikings, 12th pick. Um, all right, man, I'm going to just predict right now. I'm going to pr- write this down. I'm going to predict that the Vikings at number 12 are either going to select Derek Stingley Jr. or Jordan Davis. And if they don't get one of those two guys, they're going to trade down and do something weird, and I'm going to be pissed off. Here, I'm hearing a lot of good things about Jordan Davis. Beast. I'm hearing the, the Lions were looking at him at two. I'm like, wait a minute now. That would be yeah. I mean, look, man, you got to look at the league. Who's been dominating the league the last few years? Yep. It's 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 um uh, defensive like it's uh, D lineman. D lineman. You know what I'm saying? Nose guards and you need nose tackles. (laughs) (laughs) You gotta have that, man. That's what I want. Um, but all right, bro. Let's go. It's time for the sword cast. Definitive. Top ten. Did you hear that ghost sneeze just now? Yeah, was that what that was? A ghost yeah. sneezing? I always say that about those things. You can't that there's like a, a freshener that you can't see <laughs> in the background. Ghost sneeze. And it always sounds like a ghost sneeze to me. <laughs> um well yeah, man, it's time. Um f- top ten definitive sword cast, top ten favorite anime characters. List before we get into this list, real quick, want to go over code. Actually, you know what? We'll save that for next time. Um we're gonna get into this list. The Swordcast Definitive Top 10 Anime Characters List. I got lists from all of you. I got lists from a bunch of other people like I always do. Um, we got a lot for this. I think this might be the second most. Uh, the most list we ever got was the time we got the... Um, was the time we got the... Uh, wrestling? Wrestling. Wrestling was the most list that we've ever got. This is the second most probably. Um, got a bunch of lists from you guys. Lots of variety here i like it um uh the variety was good um again it seems like whenever we do these um the number one is always a big it's a big uh very big lead you know what i mean like there's a lot of space between um number one and and two and then the ones that that came after you know what i mean so So I'm going to do my top five. I'm not going to do it in order, but I'm going to say that these people are going to be in the top five. Uh, I'm going to say Spike Spiegel. Okay. I feel very good about that one. Um, I'm going to say Mugen and Jin, but I don't know how I'm going to separate them yet. I'm going to put them as as one for now, but I know for sure at least one of them is going to be on there. Um, I'm going to say Goku, unfortunately. I'm going to say Naruto and uh, hmm, who else? God damn it. <laughs> Should I get crazy and go someone like like Light Yagami from Death Note or maybe Edward Elric from uh, Full Metal Alchemist? Um, I'm going to keep it simple, I think, and I'm going to go with another Shonen. Or like you got Ichigo from Bleach. If it, oh fuck, never mind. Luffy, <laughs> shit. Forgot about goddamn One Piece. <laughs> Luffy, it was probably gonna be on the top five. All right, so I'm predicting Spike, the Samurai Shampoo guys, uh, Goku, Naruto, and Luffy are gonna make up the top five somehow. All right, I like it. Um, I'll say this: out of my personal list, which we're gonna share next week, which when you guys know when we do these lists, we always share our own list the following episode. I had f- there are five of mine from my list that made this. Okay, which surprisingly is the most of ever from my list that's made the the swordcast list. Yeah, last time I think like two. <laughs> like, yeah, like I two mean, of mine made the. the t- list. Wait, did we we did, we haven't? Oh, we did do the video game one, and that was the video one game where, one like, was the craziest. <laughs> one. <laughs> what are y'all? Oh, doing? Tetris number three. Fucking Pac Man. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Cobol. <laughs> 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 oh man alright man before we get into this list I'm gonna might blow your mind a little bit with some of these remember man the ones that came very close but did not make it okay who we got I was very surprised at how much love this particular character got right here mm-hmm. this character got the most votes but did not make the top 10 Sinku from Dr. Stone my man shout out to Sinku that's crazy. Good All character. Right. The next character that got the second most votes that didn't make the list. The major, Matogo Kusanagi from Ghost in the nice. Shell. Nice. 
Next characters that were in that next tier that got a lot of votes that didn't make the list. My guy, Yusuke and Hie from Yu Hakusho. Really? Both had a I lot of votes. I expected Yusuke to be on the list. That's crazy. Hiei was up there, but he didn't make it. L from Light Yagami from Death Note. Jubei from Ninja Scroll. Piccolo. Um, another character that just missed the list. Uh, wait, wait, hold on, wait. It, was it L or Light? Those are two different characters. Oh, my bad. It will. L had L had more, but Light was like right behind him. Gotcha. So they both they both were close. Okay. Uh, both of them were close. L had more, but Light was was right behind him. Mm -hmm. um, Azawa from My Hero was really close. Deku mm -hmm. was really close. He had a lot of votes that didn't make it. Mm -hmm. um, and another character who had a lot of votes that did not make the list, bro. Ronor Zoro from One Piece. Luffy did not get that many votes, bro. Really? No, sir. He did not. Co okay, so with that in mind, I actually was, before you read the list, I'm actually going to change out somebody. I'm going to cheat a little bit since we know that Luffy isn't going to make it. Okay. I'm going to switch him. I'm going to switch him out for Vegeta. I forgot about Vegeta. Ah, uh, nice. All right. I'm All right, good. man. Let's go. The Swordcast definitive top 10 list. Thank you all for sending your list in. As always, Let's go. Coming in at number 10, this anime is very, very, very hot right now. Mm -hmm. And um, this does not surprise me because there are two people in my family who I got lists from. Oh, yeah. And they love this <laughs> show. This is their favorite show. So it's, it's got to be. Levi a, from Attack on yeah. Titan starting the list off at number Levi. 10. Levi Ackerman, yes. Uh, he had more votes than Mikasa. Mikasa. I had got a few votes, but Levi. Yeah, no, that's f I can see that. Yeah. yeah, so Levi coming in at number two, coming in at number nine. This character is on my list, uh, and that is the seventh Hokage himself, Boom. Naruto Uzumaki. Uh, I love Naruto at man. number nine. Number wow. nine, bro. Yeah, he came in. He got number nine. Um, Interesting. Naruto's at number nine. Um, one of my favorite characters. You already know. Uh, there's no other character who was has been with me for that what for that long you know what i mean so yeah shout out to naruto he came in at number nine number eight i think this is the single most surprising one on here i love this character this character is high on my list as well but i think this is the most surprising one on here that's satoru gojo from interesting from uh jujutsu kaisen man i mean a lot of people do love this character he's he's uh one of the he's one of the dopest like you know the the cool teacher type of character um hold on i'm calling another uh, another olive, uh, audible uh, <laughs> audible another audible um i'm gonna since we haven't gotten into the top five yet i already got naruto wrong i'm gonna throw i'm gonna switch out goku for kenshin i might regret switching out goku but i definitely think kenshin is gonna be in the top five okay boom all right um so yeah, Gojo made the list, man. He came in at number eight. Uh, again, one of the one of the already one of the best like like cool teacher type of characters. Mm -hmm. um, he's my favorite Jujutsu Kaisen character next to, next to Maki, and um, I think I think it's dope that he made this list. He's high on mine as well. Coming in at number seven, household name that's Goku from Dragon Ball series. Um, I know you specified young Goku, but it was it was yeah. I just kind of grouped them all together. Yeah. Goku makes the list. And number seven, look, man, say what you want about how Goku is now, but obviously legendary character. Yeah. Um, one of the most recognizable and, and most popular anime characters of all time. Yep. Shout out to Goku. Coming in at number six. Batosai the Manslayer. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> We got Kenshin. We got Hammer and Kenshin coming in at number six. Dog, who's gonna be in the top five then? There's a there's another there's okay, so before we say this, remember, it was anime slash manga characters. Mm -hmm. So there is a surprising entry that is pretty high up on this list, but let's get into this top five. Coming in at number five on the Swordcast Definitive list. This character was also on my list as well. You guys already know how I feel about this guy. Jin from Samurai Shampoo. Boom. Let's go. Nice. Shout out to Jin from Samurai Shampoo making the list. One of my favorite characters ever. He's high on my list as well. Mm -hmm. Coming in at number four. I was surprised. I got to admit, I was kind of surprised at the distance between these two characters. He's from the same show. Somebody else in here. The Prince of All Saiyans. <laughs> That's Prince Vegeta. Let's go. The Dragon Ball series. Number four, bro. 
He's a better character than Goku he now, is, dog. But man, that's that he got he was getting some love, man. Yeah. Number four for Vegeta. Coming in number three. I said that Gojo being on here was the most surprising. I think this is the second most surprising because this is a strict manga entrance. This character was on a lot of lists, and he was high. He's high on mine as well. You already know. That's Miyamoto Musashi from the Vagabond manga. Nice. Coming in at number three. I didn't. It, I got some manga. Re, we got some manga. Yeah, I was gonna say Discord, I, did, I didn't get the impression that that manga was that popular. Yeah, man, we got we got some we got some manga readers uh, in the Discord. Shout out to y'all. Miyamoto Musashi coming in at number three. Another guy that's on my list, very high. Coming in at number two. It's Mugen from Samurai Champloo, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Mugen from Samurai Champloo. Nope. And that means. Yeah, it's got to be, bro. Number one is pretty predictable now. It's got to be. Um, again, one of the best anime of all time, we already know. I think that this character is the most universally loved character in anime history. I think when you talk about a character like Goku, there's a, there's just as many people that can't stand him. Mm -hmm. You talk about a character like Naruto. Just as, as much as I love Naruto, yeah. just as many people that can't stand him. Talk about a character like Luffy, just as many people that can't stand him. More. If not, oh, yeah. More. More. <laughs> when you talk about, like, these popular characters, man, like, even, I think, so, I think you got a character like Yusuke Urameshi, I think he's pretty much universally loved. Kenshin, I think he's pretty much loved. But this guy, I don't know anybody that, that doesn't like this character. And that's Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop. Coming in at number one, topping off the definitive top ten anime list. Boom. Um lots of votes, man. Lots of lots of variety. Uh shout out to Vash to Stampede as well. I forgot to mention him. He had a lot of votes. Yeah. He almost made the list too. Um good list, man. I love it. It's a good list. I'm not mad at it. Uh coming in at number ten, we had Levi from Attack on Titan. Number nine was Naruto, number eight. The most surprising entrance to me, Satoru Gojo, number seven, Goku, number six. Kenshin, number five, Jin for Samurai Shampoo, number four, Vegeta, number three, Miyamoto Musashi from the Vagabond manga, number two, Mugen, and number one, Spike Spiegel for Cowboy Bebop. In my opinion, probably the most universally loved anime character out there. So I actually did really well, even though I, ch I cheated three times. <laughs> and, and I have, I had, I got four out of five while, so check this out. I got four out of five while still getting two out of five wrong <laughs> because I had M Mugen and Jin like, combined mm -hmm. into one but but yeah spike mugen jen and vegeta all had in the top five i was really pleased i'm glad that mugen and jen both made it yeah. i knew they would both make the list because we have a big samurai shampoo uh, fan base in this in our podcast community but i didn't think that both of them would be in the top five i thought only one of them was so that's cool yep um but yeah man catch us next week man next week we'll have our own list and we'll have some more good stuff for you guys. Thanks for listening to episode 115 in the books. Also, another character who got some votes that I was surprised at. Yo, Shinji, who's the protagonist from Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh. I thought people could stand him. He actually got he got some votes, man. He was close to making the list as well. Nice. Um, I think people can just relate, man. Like, he's not that main character that's, like, super OP. Like, he's kind of yeah. a regular guy. You know what I'm saying? Got yeah. some emotional problems. Um, so... I think people can really relate to him. But all right, y'all. Thanks for the list. That was dope. Um, and next week, man, we'll give you guys our own personal list. Also, one more character who got some votes didn't make the list. Shout out to Itachi from Naruto. He's another popular character that didn't make it as well. Um, yes. But yeah, man. All right. We're out of here. Episode 115. The only true uh, generation of Big 3 is Akira, Ghost in the Shell, and Ninja Scroll. Bye. <laughs>